In this example, we're told we have an Ohio-class guided missile submarine with a length of 170 meters and a beam or a width of almost 13 meters. And we're told the speed that the submarine travels when fully submerged. We're asked in part A to find what percentage of the submarine surface has a laminar boundary layer for these conditions, and part B is to estimate the power required for the submarine to overcome skin friction drag for these conditions. So the way we're going to model this system is we're going to treat the submarine as being essentially just a long cylinder. This is our engineering approximation for the shape of that submarine. And we'll say that the incoming flow velocity is capital U. The length of the submarine is L. This is the 170 meters. And we said that the beam or the width is the 12.8 uh, meters. We'll call that D, like the diameter of the cylinder. Now, What's causing the drag on the cylinder surface is the skin friction drag that forms uh, that results from the boundary layer on the, the surface of the, the submarine. So let's unwrap the submarine. So we're going to unwrap it so that it looks like a flat plate. So we have a, a flat plate that looks something like this, where again the length is L this way. And then when we unwrap it, this distance will be the circumference of the, of the cylinder. So it'll be pi times the diameter. And the incoming velocity is still capital U. So the first thing we need to do is find where the boundary layer transitions from laminar flow to turbulent flow, because we're asked to find in part A what percentage of the submarine surface has a laminar boundary layer. So the critical Reynolds number we know, based on the distance x, x is the distance from this leading edge is, this is the critical Reynolds number, is 500,000. And the Reynolds number based on x will be the velocity times x divided by the kinematic viscosity, so that will equal 500,000. So the critical distance from the leading edge will be 500,000 times the kinematic viscosity of seawater divided by the velocity u. So using some of the numbers here, so the um, kinematic viscosity of seawater, you can look this up in a table, and it's uh, 1.05 times 10 to the minus 6 meters squared per second. We said the velocity was, it was given in the problem statement as 37 kilometers per hour, so you'd need to convert that over to meters per second, and that comes out to be 10.3 meters per second. So when you work out the number for the critical distance, or the distance from the leading edge when we go from a laminar boundary layer to a turbulent boundary layer, that comes out to be 5.1 centimeters. It's a very short distance. Remember that this full length over here is 170 meters. So in terms of percentages, the critical length over the full length of the submarine, so it's 0 0.0 Five one meters over 170.69 meters. It comes out to be 0.030%. So it's just a small, small fraction of the submarine surface has a laminar boundary layer flow. Though essentially the entire surface is turbulent. So that gives us some insight into part B when we're asked to find the power required for the submarine to overcome the skin friction drag for those conditions. Let's just treat the entire flow over the surface as being turbulent, since most of it is. And if that's the case, then we can use our turbulent boundary layer correlations. So since we're going to find the power, the power will be the drag due to skin friction times the velocity of the submarine. And then we need to find what the drag force is drag force will be the skin friction drag times the dynamic pressure based on the free stream velocity times the area over which it acts, which will be the L times pi times D. That's this area of the, the surface of the, the outer surface of the submarine. Now the skin friction drag coefficient comes from our turbulent boundary layer correlations. And so we covered that in one of the lectures, so that comes out to be 0 0.0742 
all over the Reynolds number based on the length raised to the one-fifth power. Where the Reynolds number based on the length is the free stream velocity times L divided by the kinematic viscosity. So we can go ahead and plug in the values that we have here. And if you do that, you'll find that the Reynolds number at the end of the submarine is a pretty big number. It's 1.67 times 10 to the ninth, clearly turbulent at the end. And then we can plug that Reynolds number in to find the drag coefficient, and then plug that drag coefficient up here to find the total drag. So the drag, the skin friction drag, is 3.96 times 10 to the fifth newtons, which is about 89,000 pounds of force. It's a huge number. It's a lot of drag, and that's just the skin friction drag. It doesn't account for any form drag. So a lot of drag on the submarine. So the power to overcome that drag force is 4.08 times 10 to the sixth watts, which is about 5,470 horsepower. So it's a, it's a really big number. It's a lot of power required to overcome the drag on that submarine. And of course, many of these submarines are actually nuclear powered so, you know, there is a lot of energy that's being generated by the power plant, but uh, it's very impressive how much power is required to overcome this skin friction drag. Now, the numbers that I used in this example up here actually came from the Internet. As far as I know, they're, they're correct, but you can imagine under um, emergency conditions that the submarine could travel even faster than what we have here, so there would be a lot more power potentially required to operate the submarine. All right, we'll go ahead and end the example there.